For USCFootball.com, I'm Jack Smith, joined alongside Chris Trevino for instant analysis from USC's Tuesday morning practice of Notre Dame week. Chris, it feels like we're the only people on this campus. Everyone's gone for Thanksgiving, but the USC football team still practicing on a Tuesday morning. What were some of your general thoughts? One, it was cold. Two, as you said, you know, break has started, very empty campus, not a lot of energy, which is kind of a contrast to our last feelings or visions of USC football on the field at the Rose Bowl going crazy. So it's it's a very big uh, whiplash to, to right now in this practice. But another big game, another big rivalry game with Notre Dame. So USC, you know, trying to keep that energy rolling as they go into a final big stretch of the season and then whatever lies ahead in the postseason. And of course, Tuesday means we talk with Lincoln Riley. We will not be getting a Thursday Zoom because Thursday is Thanksgiving. So this is the only time we'll get to talk to Lincoln Riley this week. Let's start with the biggest note, I think, from him where he was asked about this gauntlet that USC is going to go on. Already beat UCLA, but they still have Notre Dame and the Pac-12 championship game, which they clinched to birth to last week. And he just mentioned that the, the team is very excited by these kind of games and they're ready to go through this gauntlet. What were some of your general thoughts from what Lincoln had to say about that and other things? Specifically, he was asked about his experience during seasons of going through gauntlets like this, like three-week stretches where you have these incredibly important games, incredibly big games, and he's done that numerous times at Oklahoma. The question was about this team and how they haven't specifically gone through those gauntlets like he has. And he said, yeah, that experience is critical, but for the most part, he feels like this team, this USC team, gets up to play those games. They and they relish being on that in that position. You know, think back to last year. They're playing meaningless games against Cal at the end of the season. Now you're playing for something. You're playing for a chance to go to the Pac-12 championship. Did that. You're playing for a rivalry win over Notre Dame and to keep your playoff hopes alive. That's coming soon. We'll see what happens on Saturday. And then you have a Pac-12 championship. All meaningful games. These are the type of games and stretches you do those winter workouts for, those grueling summer workouts, those spring camps. This is what you do that for, for this moment right now in this stretch of time. So he thinks this team is ready for those moments, even though they haven't played in, in stretches like this. He says they're relishing it and embracing the gauntlet. That's what you have to do, embrace the gauntlet. Well, it is a big contrast to last year because it is almost a year to the day that Lincoln Riley arrived at USC. Justin Dietrich mentioned he can think back to last year where Lincoln Riley arrived, they had a week of practice, then they had the Cal week, and he said that even though Lincoln was there that, that first kind of week, people were still a little sluggish considering the season that they had had. Brett Neelan mentioned, you know, it's tough to be going 4-8 and eight and getting dogged down by uh, some rivalry teams, and Justin Dietrich just mentioned that at the end of the season, being in that meaningless game against Cal, the practice habits weren't there. It wasn't just the best week for USC football. Here we go, contrast a year later, USC is 10 and 1. They're getting ready to play Notre Dame and then the Pac-12 title game. And you can tell there's a clear difference with this squad, due in large part to Lincoln Riley. But I think he's right that they get up to play these bigger games. It's something they'll need to do because a win against UCLA, big emotional hurrah like we were talking about. But you still have Notre Dame the next week, which I don't know if people know this is still a very big rival for USC and a very big game considering Notre Dame will be a top 15 opponent once again. What did you have to? What did you think about what some of the players had to say about a possible emotional letdown this week? Shout out to Ron Tillani who just whizzed by us on the scooter. Uh, but, yeah, this is a thing we see every year in college football. A, guy, a team comes in, wins a big game, you know, they celebrate, it's all great. Next week, flat. Flat as heck. And we're going to be able to see if this team is mentally prepared enough to handle that after a great celebration on the Rose Bowl. But it's not the championship, you know, that's not what they're working towards. Not Essentially, you are working toward beat UCLA, but it's not the end goal. And we're going to see what they come out with against Notre Dame. This team, as we've seen throughout the season, Jack, is that sometimes they can come out a little flat. And it was mentioned that, you know, the energy was a little bit off today. You know, just from my observation, I felt like the energy was still there and the focus was still there. I just felt some of that tension was gone. Like last week, you could feel the tension of going into this game, like big rivalry game. They knew what was on the line, win and get in. I felt like some of that was eased up a little bit. Not to saying that's necessarily bad, which makes sense. They've already accomplished what they needed to do, but the still is a big game. And, you know, I talked to Nick Figueroa about that, the possibility of an emotional letdown coming this week. And he says, you know, they felt like they've been really good at keeping to the schedule, which is turning that page after a game. You know, Sunday, you take that time to kind of decompress, take it all in, and then Monday, it's back to work. And he says, we're good at turning the chapter. We're good at turning that page. And he says, you know, going back to spring camp, they've been turning the page every week. And he feels like they've had that consistency and he feels like they're doing a good job and they've done a good job early on in this week of turning the page on UCLA, celebrations, all those good feelings and focusing on Notre Dame and the Fighting Irish because as we know, still a lot to be done for this team even though there's a little bit under a month left of football to be played. 
Yeah, I talked with Justin Didich and uh, Brett Nealon, both senior offensive linemen, both big leaders for this USC team. And I asked them, you know, do they feel a responsibility to ensure that there's not a hangover from the UCLA celebration into the Notre Dame game? They said, yes, that is their responsibility. Brett Nealon did mention the energy was a bit down, but he said it was more of kind of an ebb and flow where there were high points, some low points. But he said he thought they did a good job correcting that and that, you know, him and Justin both mentioned that that's sometimes their responsibility as leaders. Justin Didich called himself an old head of the USC football program. And that's just their responsibility to make sure that USC doesn't come out flat against Notre Dame. We'll see on Saturday, of course, whether they were successful in that. But it seemed like today is practice. They, they had to at least work a little bit at combating slight energy deficiency, but they were able to get it up in the end. Do you have any final thoughts about something we heard from those players before we head on to a big preview for Notre Dame? Yeah, I mean, I just think that sometimes after that emotional letdown or not the emotional letdown the emotional expense that you you put out there against ucla or any team you play you just got to get it back up you got to get that tension back up i think i don't think anyone's overlooking notre dame you know they're eight and three rivalry game you know top 15 team in the country i think they'll be there i think by you know by the time tomorrow we see practice you know i think we'll see more of that tension build up for this team but sometimes you got to get it back and i think that's what we're talking about with the ebb and flow like you know you accomplish what you need to do uh, on saturday got to accomplish more on this Saturday. So I think they're going to get back to that. I'm excited to see or interested to see what they look like on Wednesday. And I know it's a weird week, you know, no students on campus. You don't have that energy of everyone being like, beat Notre Dame, beat Notre Dame, get back the shillelagh, beat Notre Dame. You don't have that constantly uh, around campus or in your classes. And you got Thanksgiving, so you have, you know, time off from that, uh, interrupt your schedule. So it's a weird week. I, I get that. But I think we'll see more of that tension back up on Wednesday. Yeah, and they'll have to get ready for a weird weeks in the future because the Pac-12 title game on a Friday, unlike a lot of the other conference championships, so it'll be another weird Friday practice week next week. We're not going to have instant analysis for you tomorrow, and there's no Lincoln Riley Zoom on Wednesday for the Thanksgiving week, so we got to lump in our Notre Dame preview here. We had some quotes from USC coaches and players. We've got some thoughts on our own about Notre Dame. Where do you want to start? I think we have to start where this game comes down to, and that's Notre Dame's defense. You know, this is good on good for these teams. USC's high-powered offense versus a very good Notre Dame defense. You know, that's Marcus Freeman. That's his whole deal. He's a defensive coordinator. That's his identity with this team as being a defense-first team. And, you know, statistically, this is going to be, I think, the best defense USC has faced. I didn't say it's the best defense they face. I said statistically it is the best defense they have faced. We will see that on Saturday. I think Oregon State has been a really good defense they face. Washington State I think is underrated and they're a good defense. So we'll get to see what USC's offense matches up with with that Notre Dame front specifically. You know Notre Dame has been very good at recruiting trench players offensively and defensively and Lincoln even mentioned that they have recruited well over the last several cycles they've been building and building and you can see that talent all over the field when the backups come in hey they're in four or five star guys as well so that's what lincoln riley wants to get to at usc or any program too keep recruiting 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 build out that depth chart that's not where usc is notre dame is where that is so usc does have that challenge of having to face a much deeper team and a much talented team when it, when you talk about head to toe so that's going to be an interesting aspect of this game is seeing you know usc match up with all that talent over there at notre dame but this is a interesting game with the defense and but i still think usc's offense you know has notre dame's defense been tested like a caleb williams and lincoln Riley's offense i don't think so so i think they have sort of that inherent advantage going up against this game especially with it being at home yeah, it's been a really weird season for Notre Dame. Of course, you lose week one to Ohio State when everyone kind of expected Notre Dame to come in as a playoff contender. And you think, okay, they lost to Ohio State. That's a gimme game, or it's a back-and-forth game. It's a kind of a pick 'em game. Then they lost to Marshall. They lost to Stanford. It was a really weird start for Notre Dame. They've started to come around more lately, though. Uh, they've got a win over Clemson, which is kind of their biggest win of the season so far. But we'll see what they look like against this USC offense. Uh, Lincoln Riley mentioned they haven't allowed 400 yards as a defense yet, which he said very hard to do in college football and he's right it's hard to not give up 400 yards I mean think about how many games we've seen USC give up over 400 yards but yeah, I think you're right this is the biggest test they will face so we'll see either way Justin Dietrich mentioned that it's probably the best front seven they've played Notre Dame had the highest rated corner of all of last week uh, it's going to be very interesting to see can USC run the ball like they did against UCLA could they pass the ball like they did what's going to be working for the Trojans and then on offense Notre Dame I think they're a little bit more limited than some of the teams that USC has been facing recently and UCLA some these teams that have mobile quarterbacks. That's not Notre Dame's game, but a little bit like Utah, they've got one of the better tight ends in the nation in Michael Mayer. They can run the ball well. It'll be interesting to see which way this game matches up. And I think even though Notre Dame had a, a, a you know, tough start, this is a game between two great teams. 
Yeah, I think offensively, they do remind you a little bit of Utah because they do have a really good run game. They have three really, really good running backs, all guys that are different. You know, guys who are six foot one, guys who are six foot. You have a five nine guy who's really fast and gets uh, a lot of, or uh, get a lot of catches too, and Chris Tyree. So the run game is is what makes them go on offense. And you know, Drew Pine, you know, he has stepped in for Ty- Tyler Buckner, who was lost for the season, who was more of a mobile quarterback. Pine not as mobile, so USC gets a break and not having to face kind of a scrambling quarterback. I know a lot of USC fans are like, thank heavens, no no scrambling quarterback. But the big thing for USC, or excuse me, Notre Dame's offense is their offensive line. You know, how many of the top picks in the NFL draft every year are a Notre Dame, Notre Dame offensive lineman? And once again, they have some stout offensive linemen headlined by Joe Alt, their star left tackle, who some are projecting to be the number one offensive lineman picked in next year's draft, and he would even be the number one pick offensive lineman wise in this year's draft he was eligible eligible so that's a big task for Tuli Tua Polotu you know Corey Foreman Nick Figueroa these edge guys is getting to pine off the edge and you know they're going to protect him that offensive line has only allowed five sacks their starting line has only allowed five sacks all season that's impressive so USC's front has to get to pine they have to make him uncomfortable you know he may not be a scrambler but they're not even getting to him. It doesn't even matter at that point. He doesn't need to scramble. So that is going to be the big test for USC's defenses. Get to Pine, make them uncomfortable. Don't let that running game get started. Yeah, and I think that USC did a, a pretty good job against Zach Charbonnet and the UCLA rushing attack. They were able to slant the line a lot and get into the backfield, stop runs before they were going to happen. They didn't really let Zach Charbonnet get going. I think you need a similar game plan against Notre Dame, and the fact that if you commit a lot more bodies to the run, that Notre Dame does not have as mobile a quarterback, as decorated a quarterback as you know Dorian Thompson-Robinson or Jaden Delora or even a Cameron Rising if you want to make the Utah connection. I think that, that could swing a little bit in USC's favor that they're not facing uh, such an elite quarterback like they have been recently. But Notre Dame can't be taken lightly. They do run the ball very well. And Michael Mayer, who we have to mention, could be the first tight end off the board in this year's NFL draft. He's very talented. He's a lot like Dalton Kincaid. He blocks well in the run game, and he also makes some great catches. Yeah, I mean, Mayer is the other key for Notre Dame's offense. And the key for USC's defense is stop Michael Mayer. He is more talented than Dalton Kincaid. Sorry, Dalton Kincaid fans, but as you said, a potential number one uh, first round pick and the number one tight end off the board. That's going to be key, you know, figuring out a way to stop him. You know, USC has struggled with tight ends, as we know, but this is a big test for them. And if they want the chance to maybe play for a college football playoff, they got to figure out a way to stop number 87. All right. I, it might be earlier in the week, so I'm not going to make you do a prediction because it's only Tuesday. The game's on Saturday. But overall, what are you feeling for this game? Maybe a storyline that might emerge or something that you're seeing in USC's favor or Notre Dame's favor? I think it just comes down to USC's offense. If, you know, Caleb Williams, who is red hot over his last five games, keeps up with the pace that he's been playing at, you know, you know, you got to have respect for Notre Dame's defense, but it's just going to be so hard to stop Caleb Williams. So if they can keep him protected and he can do what he does or has been doing the last five games, you know, keep that Heisman push going, you know, I see USC coming out on top. I know that's not a concrete prediction, but I just find it hard that with the way the offense is playing, you know, getting some healthier weapons back. You're getting Mario Williams probably back for a more uh, fulfilled role this weekend. You got Kyle Ford playing really well. Jordan Addison, bananas game last week. You know, you know, I, I think the the sky's the limit for this offense on Saturday, and it's going to be a big test. But you know, I think you got to go with the hot hand, and that's Caleb Williams. I feel like if you're USC or Lincoln Riley, when you're facing up against a team, you'd you'd honestly prefer it to be a team that's a defense first team as opposed to an offense first team, because I think you're more worried about an offense matching the level of offense that USC has as opposed to a defense maybe stopping Caleb Williams on one or two more drives than a UCLA might have, but doesn't have quite the explosive offense. Of course, you could have a team with both. Georgia can be that sometimes. There's a lot of teams in the country that could be that. But if you're Lincoln Riley, you're Caleb Williams, you're USC, I think you'd prefer to match up with a team that has a strength on defense because Lincoln Riley knows how to exploit those kind of teams. Yeah, it honestly feels like a souped up version of Cal. You know, a good defense, Notre Dame great defense, you know, not really a mobile quarterback, got some weapons, really good running back, you know, Jaden Knott for Cal. So it just feels like a richer, pricier version of Cal. You know, they have, you know, good defensive players, good scheme, good defensive coaching from, you know, Justin Wilcox. So that's what it kind of feels like. You know, they're facing a souped up version of Cal with a good defense and a, you know, middling offense with some weapons.
Yeah, well, that's all we've got for you guys today. We won't have instant analysis tomorrow, unfortunately. So we hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving. I hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving. And the Coliseum will be packed most likely 4.30 p.m. USC versus Notre Dame. It'll be on ESPN, so big national coverage. We'll see tonight where USC and Notre Dame end up in the college football playoff rankings. Will USC be five? Will USC be six? We'll find out later today. We'll see where Notre Dame is as well. But either way, big rivalry game for USC coming off the heels of Thanksgiving. This has been uh, instant analysis. I'm Jack Smith and Chris Trevino. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you check out uscfootball.com for more. We're not done. I got one more thing. I do this every year on Instant. Okay. The, 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 the tip for the pumpkin pie. Take the pumpkin pie. Get Cool Whip. Not Ready Whip. Cool Whip. Take it out. Let it defrost a little bit. Okay, get your slice of pumpkin pie. Then take multiple scoops of your Cool Whip. Drop it on that bad boy. Then encase the entire pumpkin part of your pie. Not the crust, just the pumpkin part. Encase the whole thing in Cool Whip. Trust me, take it, take it, don't leave it. It's gonna be great. That's my pro tip for Thanksgiving. I'm out. What's on your plate? Uh, stuffing, mashed potatoes, lots of mashed potatoes, and uh, you know, turkey. That's it. I'm very simple. And then like 10 slices of pie at the end. You heard it here first. That's my favorite thing to say when, when you drop some knowledge on this analysis. You did hear it here first. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you're checking out uscfootball.com inside Troy here on YouTube for all of your USC fix up until the Notre Dame game. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next week.